Hello, fellow post producers. My name is Post Production Pi, editor in chief for SRLounge.com. Welcome to another installment of our weekly Ordinary to Extraordinary Raw Edit featuring the SR Lounge Lightroom Preset System V5. Now, as always, I'm gonna be demonstrating how to create these effects using the preset system first, and then we'll be going through the actual develop settings just to help everybody understand what's going on behind the scenes with each look and effect. That way, those that have the presets and those that don't have the presets can benefit as well from watching these videos. Now, again, if you don't have the presets and you are interested in learning more about the SR Lounge Lightroom Preset System, then just click on the link below in the description and it'll take you right over to the SR Lounge store on srlounge.com. All right, so let's get started. In the last tutorial, we created our first mixology and we're gonna build upon that. We're gonna go ahead and create another one. In this video, we're gonna be creating a filmic color mixology for this image that you see here. But let's just take a look at a curiosity sake and let's go look at that dark yellow violet fade that we created in the last tutorial. So here's the preset. All we gotta do is adjust our exposure and then our temperature and tint to taste. I'm gonna go a little bit more less pink. Sorry, a little more or less pink. That doesn't make any sense. And then we're gonna take the temperature down a little bit. We get a beautiful looking fade image. Again, this is a great mixology that we've created here. So I'm gonna keep that in there. I love that look. But uh, for now, we're gonna create a new preset. So if you are missing this mixology, go ahead and watch the last tutorial. All right, so let's reset this out by hitting Control Shift R or Command Shift R on a Mac. We're gonna open up the base soft stylized folder and in the last tutorial, we were basically going through the bright or just the standard fades with skin desaturation applied to them. Now we're gonna go through the filmic color versions. So once again, when you're applying this, go ahead and flip through or at least be previewing in your navigator as you're flipping through so you can see what those different effects look like. All you gotta do is just basically have the navigator window open. Make sure that this is available or selected in your preferences, by the way. So you wanna have that option of show preview on mouse over selecting your preferences. When we go to filmic color, we get this look and we can go and we're gonna select one of these different filmic color looks. So basically with these filmic colors, what we're getting here is it's, it's essentially adding grain, it's adding vibrance and saturation to kind of create this filmic look to the image. From here, what we're gonna do is modify again the cu uh, curve as far as the color toning and any tweaks that we want in the actual uh, contrast and so forth. Then we're gonna adjust uh, adjustments and then we're gonna go to special effects and tweak our final color scheme if we want to. So let's see which one of these we like best. We're on dark fade right now. Uh, we already did a dark fade, so let's do something else. Let's do maybe a neutral fade. All right, I'm gonna brighten this up just a bit so we have a little bit better of a kind of background to look at or just an image to look at so we know where we're going. Let's hit R. I wanna create a nice two to one crop. So let's just go enter custom. Uh, I have it shown at the bottom, which right now because I already had it previously. I use two to one a lot, so it's already in there. But if you don't use two to one, just say enter custom and type in two, hit okay. We're just gonna pull this down. So that way we have just kind of this green hill background as our background in the image. I'm gonna pull it down a little bit more. A little bit more. All right, that looks good. Okay, so we have this nice green background. I'm gonna brighten up my exposure even more. Let's just pull it up a bit. Let's get to the right tint and temperature that we want. So I'm gonna take my tint down maybe, and I think it would look great to have this overall kind of kind of green tintish, uh, or not green tintish, but a green tint to our filmic color, okay? So what we wanna do is we selected a neutral fade filmic color. That was our first click over here. What we're gonna do is go down to our curves and into the cool curves, we can check out the different neutral washes. So what I'm gonna apply and what I would know I want is a teal neutral wash, but let's just click through and see what these effects are doing. So our Azure is adding kind of some blue toning to it. We have Violet, which is adding some more of those pinks. Cool Cross, which is adding a cool tone, but cross processing, and I actually dig that kind of vibe too. So maybe we'll stick with the Cool Cross instead of the Teal. Teal is nice, I like Teal, I also like Cool Cross. I kinda like them both, yeah. We're gonna add some more teal effects. So let's just go with Cool Cross. We can modify again in a second if we want to. All right, so I'm gonna jump down now and as far as everything else goes, I'm pretty happy actually with all the other color. So I'm not gonna make any adjustments to anything here. Let's drop down and jump into our special effects. So the last in our BCA step here, we're gonna choose a, a color scheme. Now what I'm gonna do is actually, well, let's go with a complementary color scheme. I'm gonna go with green red. So green is kind of matching the highlights and we get a little bit of red toning that's gonna drop into that blue that we're getting in the cross processing and we get this beautiful mix right now. 
So I really dig this vibe that we're getting from this image, the vibe, the spirit of the image. I love it. I feel like it works really well, especially with this image. We already have a lot of yellows and greens to begin with. So we have this beautiful kind of analogous color scheme going on with this image to start with. So it looks really, really nice. All right. So let's drop the temperature or sorry, the tint just a little bit more and let's see where we go. I'm going to take down to maybe negative five. I'm going to bring my temperature around to right about where it was is good. And then I'm just going to adjust my exposure up a little bit. And this is basically where I'm going to leave it. I'm going to do one last special effects adjustment, which is I'm going to add a little bit more grain. We have some grain, but it's not very heavy. And I want to make sure that it's kind of visible. So I'm going to go from medium. We're actually on light and we can go from medium all the way up to heavy to max. Uh, we've toned down even the max film grain because the previous version of Max was just way too high. Now I'm going to go probably with heavy film grain on this image. I think it has a beautiful look right now to this filmic effect or this filmic look with the image. So let's leave it on heavy film grain. If we want to do any edge softening, we can. We can apply edge softening and adjust it up if we want to. It actually has a really nice look to it. So I might do a little bit of edge softening here. Let's go with medium. And the last thing I'm going to do, and you can see that edge softening being applied. What's being applied is actually these graduated filters that are going all the way around the image. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do now is let's go ahead and well, actually let's cover our, well, you know what? It's an easy adjustment anyway, so let's just do the adjustment. Let's go to a radial filter. Again, if you don't have radial filters, if you're using Lightroom 4, this is the one step that you'll want to use an adjustment brush instead and just paint around the area instead. So let's grab a radial filter. We're going to just kind of open up this little area right here. And I want to have it kind of be this tall ovally shape so it quickly feathers off and kind of gets a little bit darker around the edges. So let's go to about right here. Let's go around 60 ish and I can pull this out maybe a little bit more. So it's not quite so dramatic of a change. There we go. And I love that effect. Okay. So here it is. Look at the before. Here's the after very quick, very few adjustments here, right with the Lightroom preset system. And we have this beautiful color filmic effect with an overall green tint. Now, before I forget, let's actually save this out as a new mixology. I'm going to hit plus right here. And let's go ahead and name this preset. So I'm going to go into my mixology. We'll call it zero two. I'm going to call this, let's call this green or we can call it whatever we want. Let's call it teal. Um, and let's call it filmic fade plus let's go edge, edge soften. All right. I'm going to hit create. And there we go. There's our new preset. And I'm actually, I want to kind of change the name of this. Well, let's actually name this without a, a dash here. Okay. And dark yellow violet fade. Eh, we'll keep it for now. We can always reorganize later on, but we have our new preset right here, which is great. I can reset it out and just test it real quick and make sure we got everything. All right. So we've got our new preset created and let's now go through our develop settings and see what actually we did. So with exposure, we raised it up by 1.35. Again, this image was a little bit dark to begin with, but also with our curve, we wanted to go with a brighter look for the image. We've added additional contrast. We pulled down the highlights and the whites a bit. We left shadows in the blacks right where they are. That way we kind of have an over overall brighter look to our fade and we don't get kind of those crushed blacks. If we were to lower this, we get a lot of crushed blacks, uh, you know, as they drop below this point in the curve and we kind of just want that nice bright look with this image. Now going down, we have clarity at zero. We can actually take this down a little bit. I didn't even recognize that. Let's take it down. Um, again, we can go and tweak with the adjustments here. That's the one thing that I didn't adjust. So let's see if we want heavy versus soft. I actually like that heavy look. I'm going to go with the heavy look. And once again, let's just go up to the top. Let's update that preset right here. So I'm just going to hit update and now we have that built in. So that's good. We can show you guys how to update presets when you mess up like I did. All right. So we have negative 20 clarity to kind of soften up our midtones a bit. Vibrance at plus 15. This is what gives us that kind of oversaturated look in this filmic effect is that we're actually adding, uh, you know, vibrance to this. So this yellows really, really pop as they would on like an old uh, film photograph where you see certain colors, very vibrant, others kind of faded. All right. Saturation is left at zero. We have our tone curve. This is a neutral curve that's basically pulling down our highlights while lifting our shadows. So it basically creates that fade. It's also a little bit biased more on the shadow side. So that way it kind of raises up the tonality of the image just a bit. So it's a little bit brighter. All right, now if you remember, we use the cool cross process look. So that means if we flip to red, we can see red being pulled down a little bit. So these warm colors are being lifted out of the image. We can go to green and we can see that the greens are also being slightly lifted out. 
and then the blues are being added back in the shadows and also a little bit in the highlights. So this kind of cools off the image, adds some blues to the shadows, which is our little cross-processing look. It drops the greens and the reds, which gives us very neutral highlights. All right, and that's giving us that cool toning. Not cool as in it looks awesome, but like literally cooler, like bluer. All right, so let's go down. We have uh, no HSL adjustments are necessary for this preset. With our split toning, we, I believe, let's see, what did we add? We added this green and red mix. So it was an analogous, I'm sorry, it was a complementary mix, a green, red complementary mix. We have green in the highlights, a little bit of reds in the shadows, which works really well with those blues that we have in the shadows because it creates like this nice violet uh, split tone effect in the shadow area. Again, you guys can always adjust the balance between these two. We left this one, we leave all these balances basically at the test point, which is the point that it looks best over most images. All right, going down, we have sharpening at 70, 1.5, 10, 30. This is one of those things where if you want to sharpen, you can. It really doesn't matter. If it's zeroed out, it's not going to make a huge difference because we're adding so much grain to begin with. Either way, you're not going to be able to really tell, and that's why we've left it in is just because, well, you can't really tell anyway. We don't need noise reduction. That would be kind of strange if we added grain and then, well, tried to reduce it, wouldn't it? All right, so we don't need any noise reduction in this image. Going down to lens veneer, you'll see that we actually have a little bit of a vignette applied, which is darkening the edges just a tiny bit, pulling the midpoint in, and now look at grain. We actually have 70, 30, 30 for our amount size and roughness, and that's creating that filmic effect. That's that last adjustment. We had a more subtle amount of grain uh, previously, but we modified that to kind of make it a little more heavy. All right, so that's it for our teal filmic fade plus edge soften preset. Again, you can name these however you like, or you can choose to save them or not. It really just depends on your style, what you guys like. We're just trying to show you different ways of using the preset system. So let's check out the before and after one more time. Here's the before for this image. Here's the after. And I want to show you all one thing. Let's create a little virtual copy. Because we are using split tones and split tones, and, and as well as the curve, they're going to affect highlights and shadows differently. That means that if I, let's say I reset out the, um, let's just reset out the entire image. Let's reset everything, and I'm just going to apply the crop back to this. Okay, so let's just apply the crop only. This is just a demonstration. You guys don't need to follow along with this part. Now, if I apply this preset right now, what's going to happen is that you see a lot of pink tones in her skin. This is because the skin is falling into the shadows right now, and when we lift out the exposure, the image is going to take a completely different look. So right now, when it's at zero, the split toning is basically applying reds to the shadows. And since her face is in the shadows, we get reds there. As we start to lift it out, then we start to see the greens being applied to the highlights. So that's one important thing to note, that when you're using these color curves, when you're using split toning, it's going to make a difference depending on where your exposure is at. So if your exposure is not quite in the right place, well, you're not going to see what the image truly looks like. So don't get freaked out if an image, when you apply it, if the preset looks kind of dark or if it looks pink or green, get your tones, get everything to the right point, and then make fine-tuning adjustments from there. All right, so great job, everybody, and I'll see you all in the next video.